Good morning, you're watching Morning Expresso. I'm Charulata Biswas. Let's get you started with the top stories that are making headlines today. The big story. In what indicates that the pickup in economic activity has been sustained after a series of localized lockdowns during the COVID-19 second wave, gross goods and services tax collections in August for sales in July crossed the rupee 1 lakh crore mark. The August collections at rupees 1 lakh 12,020 crore were 29.6% higher than in August 2020. Read more about this on IndianExpress.com. Top stories you'll find only in the Indian Express. In a signal that the new Taliban regime in Afghanistan may allow sporting events to go ahead, a top official of the Afghan Cricket Board told the Indian Express that the team's tour of Australia this year which will include the first ever test between the two countries, has received the green signal. Hamid Shinbari, chief executive officer of the Afghanistan Cricket Board, said, The Taliban government has been supporting cricket and all our cricket will be held as per schedule. Gautam Mukhopadhyay, the former ambassador to Kabul, spoke to the Indian Express and answered questions such as what led to the defeat of America in Afghanistan and the return of the Taliban after 20 years more dominant than ever before. What did India gain or lose from its financial, strategic and political investments there? The former ambassador answers all such questions and explains as to what lies ahead. Read the full conversation on our website. Here's a look at the stories from the front page. Drawing up a sample calendar for Gram Sabhas, the centre in an advisory to all states and union territories has suggested that monetization of assets to increase own sources of revenue should form part of Gram Sabha deliberations. While successive finance commissions have recommended that rural local bodies raise their own source of revenue, this is the first time that the government has suggested deliberations on monetization of assets. The CBI has detained the lawyer of former Maharashtra Home Minister Anil Deshmukh, questioned the NCP leader's son-in-law and arrested a sub-inspector of the agency in connection with the alleged leak of an official report on its investigation into allegations of policemen being coerced by Deshmukh to collect bribes on his behalf. Here are the must -read. Bijendra Pal Rana, an inspector who was picked for the National Police Medal for Gallantry this Independence Day, was amongst the police personnel caught in a recent crackdown launched by Merit Police to weed out corruption within its ranks. A case of bribery was registered against Rana, who went missing from the Sadar Bazar police station after the charges were levied against him. The emergency of a new power centre in Kerala unit of the Congress comprising AICC General Secretary K.C. Venugopal, KPCC President K. Sudhakaran and Leader of Opposition V.D. Satishan seems to be pushing senior party leaders Ramesh uh, Chenital, former leader of opposition to the sidelines. The latest round of appointments of District Congress Committee DCC chiefs reinforced that the three leaders had clearly gained an upper hand. Sanskriti Vibhag Tumhare Baat Ka Nahi Natya Mahotsav The unique name of an upcoming theatre festival to commemorate the 99th birth anniversary of theatre stalwart Habib Tanbir was inspired by an insult hurled at one of the event's organisers when he approached the Chhattisgarh Culture Department to hold the event. The free entry event is being seen as a move of defiance by this Raipur based theatre crew. The patriarch of separatist politics in the valley and the hardline Hurith Hawk, Syed Ali Shah Gilani, passed away at his residence in Srinagar late Wednesday night. A former elected legislator, the ailing 92 year old had been under house detention for more than a decade. His death comes when both his and the moderate factions of the Hurith are in disarray in the wake of a crackdown by the NIA, the abrogation of Article 370 and the downgrade of JNK into two union territories. La Liga, which dipped its toes into unconventional broadcasting with the Facebook streaming deal three seasons ago, is now on NTV. While the Messi-Ronaldo rivalry headed out of the El Clasico sphere, La Liga was bound to be delicately poised when selling its broadcasting rights. Anshul Ailawadi, the business head of youth, 
Music and English Entertainment at Viacom 18 recalls how the deal was sealed and MTV came on board after the vibe matched with Jose Antonio Casaza, India Managing Director of Lali. And in today's Delhi Confidential, we talk about Karnataka CM Baswaraja Bermai, who has become a talking point in BJP circles for taking certain measures that have earned him praise from the central leaders. One of the measures Bermai took was asking party workers and visitors not to give him garlands or bouquets, instead they can bring books. The Chief Minister has also asked the police not to give him guard of honour during his visits to the districts unless it is a big event. And finally, in today's episode of the Three Things podcast, we discuss the significance of India's first contact with the Taliban, the viral outbreak in Uttar Pradesh that has killed 32 children and we go over details of the Allahabad High Court's observation on the importance of cows in India. That's a news wrap. Stay tuned to our channel and subscribe for all the news updates. Thank you for watching.